could see. This was a country in mourning and in shock. Across Russia, flags flew at half-mast for the victims of the Concert Hall Massacre. And at the scene of Friday's attack, Krukus City Hall, the queues grew longer and longer. The National Day of Mourning experienced most acutely here. There was an outpouring of sympathy, a mountain of tributes to the dead. As well as leaving flowers and candles, people have also been bringing soft toys and sweets because amongst the dead, there were children. They've also been leaving messages. One is addressed to the attackers and it reads, you are scum, we will never forgive you. Among the crowd, there was a mixture of grief and anger. It was a big shot because I live nearby and I saw it from my windows. It's, uh, it's horrific and a big tragedy. Such a terrible loss, says Natalia. I'll never forgive or forget. Bring back the death penalty, Yevgeny says, for terrorists, for sure. This is how the attack had begun. With gunmen in the foyer and desperate attempts to take cover. The attackers moved on to the auditorium. By the end of this, more than 130 people were dead. Four suspects have been arrested. Tonight, the suspected gunmen appeared in court. Russia claims they'd been caught fleeing to Ukraine and had contacts there. Kiev fiercely denies any link to the attack. The Islamic State group says it was behind the shooting. And on this day of mourning, silent prayers from a somber looking President Putin. The Kremlin says he lit a candle for the victims in church at his country estate. And Russia is praying that there will be no more attacks. If there are, that will test people's faith in the president to keep them safe. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News. Russian Air Force has been inflicting pretty heavy casualties throughout Syria's civil war on Islamic State fighters. And a recent um, communique by Islamic State's kind of leadership said, we will never forgive and forget. In other words, we will settle scores. So that's one possibility. Another is Afghanistan, where ISIS's what's called Khorasan branch um, are fighting the Taliban. Now, that's going to sound strange, but they are mortal enemies. And ISIS considers that the Taliban are allies of Russia. In 2022, they attacked the Russian embassy in Kabul. So that's another possibility. And the third is the general kind of suppression, for example, here in the UK, which is the, the security service, the, their highest priority, the, the bulk of their workload is still ISIS and Al-Qaeda inspired terrorism, trying to, trying to head off those threats. Now, currently, Britain is at the middle of five, five levels of terror threat. It's at something called substantial, which means that it's not particularly reassuring. A terror threat is thought likely, but it's only the middle one. France has gone to the highest of three. Now, that would only happen in this country if there was a actual evidence of a terrorist